Valentine, by the way. I'm Joel. Hi, Joel. No jokes about my name. You like? Oh. You look like a tangerine. I want to be a great, big, oh, huge no. elephant. You're trying to figure out, did I have sex with someone tonight? Isn't that how you get people to like you? What's the name of it again? Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. I just say it's a Charlie Kaufman script, and then they kind of understand the vibe of it. It's probably one of the wildest Kaufman scripts I've read. So I end up just saying it's this movie that Charlie Kaufman's doing with Michelle Gondry and uh, Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet are in it. You're not a stalker or anything, right? I'm not a stalker. You're the one that talked to me, remember? That is the oldest trick in the stalker book. There's a stalker book. Mm -hmm. Okay, I gotta read that one. It's a wonderful story. I had worked with both Charlie Kaufman, the writer, and Michelle Gondry, the director. When I first read the script, it felt to me like the love story that I had always wanted to see, which starts off with the point where two people are sick and tired of each other and at each other's throats. Clem, let me drive you home. Get out of my face! And then moves backwards in telling how they got that way to the beginning of love, to the first blush of attraction, and then wraps around itself and goes back to the end again. It's a love story, but it's not like a romantic comedy. There is an element of mystery and thrill, and it's, it's a lot about relationship. It's about memories as well. I just immediately identified with it. I mean, I, as I think most people will, the concept is just so kind of universal. A, a really original way of, uh, you know, saying that we love who we love and we can't help ourselves. Joel, you should come up to the Charles with me sometime. It gets frozen this time of year. That sounds scary. Exactly. I'll pack a picnic, a night picnic. Night picnics are different, and um, we that could... sounds good. But I, I should uh, go now. I think that people are going to be very surprised to see the character that Jim Carrey is playing in this film. It's very unlike any of the characters he's played before. But here it's in a very different type of story, and he's playing a very different type of character. In many scenes, he's almost unrecognizable with the Jim Carrey that we all know. I play a guy who he thinks has found the love of his life, and, you know, I mean, it's just somebody who's expresses a side of him that's in there, but he can't express because he's a very withdrawn character. But you can tell by his drawings that this wild stuff is going on inside, but Clementine is the outward manifestation of that. She's the wild thing that's inside him that he doesn't have the guts to bring out. I don't go too far. Woo! Whoa! Ow! Oh. Are you okay? Oh! Ah. I think I Come should on. go back. Huh? Come on! What if it breaks? Jim Carrey. And I, for a start, paired together. It's a really unlikely pairing. You know, you would not imagine that he and I would end up doing something like this together. And everyone's playing completely against type. I'm playing the Jim Carrey part, and he's actually playing the sort of Kate Winslet part. When I read this script, I just thought it was so entirely different from everything I'd ever done, and because I'm so used to being seen in these kind of corset pieces and the English rose and da 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 da, -da and Clementine is just a foul-mouthed lunatic. I can't hear you. I can never the f understand what you're saying. Don't want to talk about this. Twist. We're f gonna talk I about don't it. Want to you talk can't just say something like that and say you don't want to talk about it. I'm sorry, Clint. I'd make sorry. a the basis of the story, it's about this man who has found out that his girlfriend has erased him from her memory. What is it? I don't know. It's some place that does a thing. And as a result of getting that information, he does the very same thing. My name is Joel Barish, and I'm here to erase Clementine Krishinsky. My character, Dr. Howard, Meersviak has invented this technique whereby he can expunge kind of unpleasant memories. Here at Lacuna, we have a safe technique for the focused erasure of troubling memories. Is there any risk of brain damage? Technically, the procedure is brain damage. But it's on a par with a night of heavy drinking. Nothing you'll miss. Okay. I don't know if I like this. Oh, Jesus. Come on, come on. Come on, careful. Come on, come on. Step back. Just 
Take it easy. Lacuna, the memory erasing company, is basically like the guys who will come and paint your house for 10 bucks a room, you know? You see these two characters, Stan and Patrick, just fumbling and bumbling around. I mean, they got chips and cokes and stuff all out over all this medical equipment. It is funny with Mark and <laughs> with Mark and Elijah because those two are just like freaking wreck. They just are beating on stuff. It's like testosterone multiplied by a hundred. <laughs> Can you wake him up? Oh, you can't wake him up. I had already heard it. That baby's history. It's all being wiped away. They're erasing you, Clem. You'll be gone by morning. What happens as we're going through the memories and they're being erased is eventually you start to get to the part where you realize that you loved each other and that there were these beautiful memories. You see why you love the person. And he decides he, that that's a valuable thing to save. I want to call it off. Can you hear me? I don't want this anymore. I want to call it off. He's off the mat. You seem to have lost him for a moment. Oh, dear. So he spends the entire time in his head trying to stop the process. The eraser guys are coming here, so what if you take me somewhere else, somewhere where I don't belong, and we hide there till morning? Even if he can't have her, he wants to save the memory of her, and so he takes her and tries to hide her in memories where she didn't exist before. And it's this kind of chase. You can run, but you can't hide. Where'd you go? Look, we're heading, Joel. Look, hey, Joel. I want her to pick me up. It's weird how strong that desire is. Joel, Joel, <laughs> look at me. Look. You'll remember me in the morning, and you'll come to me, and you'll tell me about us, and we'll start huh? out. People's memories lie all the time. And part of the trick, I think, is that as we go back in his memories, there's pieces of the room that aren't there anymore. So we've really played around with the continuity a lot in the film. The intellectual side of the Charlie Kaufman's and the completely artistic, whimsical, crazed visual side of Michel Gondry and his ability to uh, experiment is incredible. And one more time, more spinning. It was very clear to me coming into this that Michel, he's really a visual genius. And I mean, I, I, I say that with utter admiration. I'm telling my director that he's irreplaceable. What would I do without my little frog? The things that he does through the lens by just twisting a light or putting in panes of glass and making me be present in a frame and then disappear literally in front of your very eyes. It's like magic. I love being bathed in the sink. Such a feeling of security. What the heck was he doing there? There is some shot where you see Kate disappearing and reappearing. That were done in camera just by the geography of the location. They could use a secret door to exit as the camera was following her, and then as the camera turned toward Jim to see his reaction, she would reappear the other side. And that's like a ballet, like a choreography, and I think actors really enjoy doing that. It's way more uh, exciting for them to shoot this way than to shoot with blue screen, where they don't know what's going to happen, they feel manipulated. Being able to go, here's a 75-watt bulb, and uh, you're going to run around the wall and take your clothes off and come out the other side and be a different person, or whatever it is. He just. He makes it all happen in the camera. There's no special effects. It's all done right in front of the camera. Michel is unlike any other director I've worked with, but in spite of the fact that he has a rather kind of unorthodox approach to what he does, you, you give him the benefit of the doubt because you know that what he's doing, it's going to be exciting. I'm just happy. I've never felt that before. <sighs> I'm just exactly where I want to be. The deep, turbulent current of, you know, lost love. Everybody has somebody that, some painful memory of a relationship that they'd love to erase, but probably shouldn't. I believe that everything that happens in life, be it positive or negative, shapes who we are, because I wouldn't be the person I am today without them. This is it, Joel. It's going to be gone soon. What do we do? Enjoy it. I wouldn't have been able to do this movie without some of the things I've been through. Unless you had your balls busted, 
you know, you're, you're just no good to anybody in a script like this. We like to think we learn from our mistakes, but I don't know if we do. Oh, I don't know. I like the guy. I want my mommy. This is sort of warped. 